Hi, everybody. It's Professor Ken. And I'm really sorry that class got cut off due to my computer malfunction, but I'm going to catch up now and give you some insight into the homework that needs to be done this week. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. All right, next thing I'm going to do is go to our Jamboard. And I've got a lot of notes on there, but I want to go to a new frame. All right, so I'm going to write um, a geometric sequence. And I'm just going to start with eight. The next one's going to be 24. The next one's going to be 72. And the next one after that is going to be 216 with some dots. So obviously the first term is eight. Now the, to find the common ratio, this is something I didn't emphasize in class, but I need to emphasize it now. We take any term and divide it by the term before it. So to find the common ratio here, it will be 24 divided by eight, which equals three. We could have done 72 divided by 24, that equals three, or 216 divided by 72, that equals three. Now, we know what A1, A2, A3, and A4 are. Let's see what the next terms are. So A5 would equal 216 times three, and that would be six times three is 18. Regroup to one, four, six. So that would be 648. And a six would equal 648 times three. So three times eight is 24. Regroup the two, three times four is 12, with two is 14. Regroup a one, three times six is 18, one is 19. So just keep multiplying by three. All right. Um, if we were gonna do the recursive formula, the recursive formula is the nth term equals the term right before it times r. So in this case, the nth term would equal the term right before it, a sub n minus one times three. That's the recursive formula. And the explicit formula is a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one. So in this case, a sub n equals the first term, which is eight, times the common ratio is three raised to the n minus one. And that's all you really need to know about geometric sequences. So now I'm gonna go over four problems from the homework. And if you can understand all four of these, then you'll be just fine with that problem set. So let me go to the problem set and I'm going to copy problem 29 first. So if I go to my jam and hit paste, ah, perfect. This up here, make it a little bigger. Okay, it says find the common ratio in the three terms of the sequence after the last given one. Well, remember the common ratio oops, is going to equal one term divided by the term right before it. So it would be negative eight divided by negative two, and that equals positive four. Now it says find three terms after that. So a sub five, take this and multiply it by four, and we get negative 512. I got that because I did positive four times negative 128. Now to find the one after that, I'm gonna do negative 512 times positive four, and I get negative 2048. And then lastly, I'm gonna do negative 2048 times four to get the seventh term, and that would equal negative 8192. Okay, so that's how we do problem number 29. The next problem I'm going to do with you is problem 33. So let me copy it. And I have to go slowly or else the computer will mess up. And let me hit paste. Ah, it's working. Thank goodness. 
make it a little bigger for you. Okay, find the common ratio in the recursive formula. Well, the common ratio is always the second term divided by the first term or one term divided by the term right before it. So it's five divided by negative one equals negative five. Now it says find the recursive formula. Well, the recursive formula states that the nth term is equal to the term right before it times the common ratio, which is negative five. I always say parentheses are free, use them. So a sub n equals a sub n minus one times negative five. I'm gonna put a box around that and there's our answer. Easy peasy on that one. Okay, let's go to another problem. Okay, given the first term and the common difference of an arithmetic sequence, find the explicit formula and the three terms in the sequence after the last one. Now, this is a little bit of a trick because we're back to arithmetic. So, and we have D, the common difference. So we have to remember that explicit formula. So let me copy this down. And we're gonna do problem number 45. I'll go to the jam. Hit paste. Okay. Arithmetic sequence, so there's common difference. We keep adding to get to the next one. So for 45, it says, find the explicit, oh, given the first term and the common difference, find the explicit formula. So for arithmetic sequence, remember the explicit formula was a n equals a one plus n minus one times d. And then it says find the explicit formula and the three terms in the sequence after the last given one. So we know a1 is equal to 35. So to get to the next one, add negative 20. a2, 35 plus negative 20 is positive 15. a3, 15 plus negative 20 is negative 5. And a4, negative 5 plus negative 20 is negative 25. And that's all there is to it. You guys are good at this. I hope. Okay, and the last one is my favorite one. We're gonna do problem number 37. So let me copy it first. Okay, we'll go to the jam. Hit paste. It says find the common ratio and the term named and the explicit formula. So we're gonna do it a little backwards. We're gonna find the common ratio, then the explicit formula, then the term. So to find the common ratio, you just do one term and divided by the term before it. So it would be 12 divided by four equals three. So the common ratio is three, we're on problem 37. And the explicit formula then would be a sub n equals a sub one, whoops. I meant to write a sub one, I wrote eight. A sub one times r to the n minus one. So a sub one is equal to four and r is equal to three. So a sub n equals a sub one, which is four, times the common ratio, which is three, raised to the n minus one. Okay, we're gonna take this over here. We're asked to find a nine. So a sub nine is gonna equal four times three to the nine minus one. So a sub nine, oops, is gonna equal four times three to the eighth power. Okay. So in this case, we don't do four times three first, we do three to the eighth power first. So let's go to Desmos. And we have three to the eighth power is equal to 6,561. Take that and multiply it by four. So 6,561 times four 
and we get 26,244. Let me copy that. Okay, go back to the Jan. So that equals Oh, I forgot what it was. 26,244. 26,244. Okay, so I hope this helps you. Um, next, I'm going to show you really quickly um, the gizmo that we have to do for homework. So um, let's go to the course site. I think this is the course site. Yes. Okay, and we have to go to the Geometric Sequences Gizmo. And here's the student exploration, which I'll print out. And now I'll go to the Gizmo, which is www.explorelearning.com. I'll log in. And I'll go to Math Ideas, which is our course. And I'll find the geometric sequences gizmo. There's arithmetic sequences. Where the hell is geometric sequences? Hang on. Geometric sequences. Okay, I'll launch it. And we see it's a lot like the other one. So here it says the common ratio is 1.2, but if we make the common ratio 2 and we zoom out a little bit, okay. Uh, we see we can only even see the first five. Um, there's the next one after it. All right, so we could see that it grows very, very steeply. All right, if we make A a little bit bigger, okay, it spreads it out a little bit more. If we make R even bigger, it spreads it, grows even faster. So the smaller R is, the flatter is the curve. And if we want, like the coronavirus, if we want to flatten that curve, we want to do what we can to make R small. Okay, so let's make A1 equal to 2. Sometimes if you type it in, it's easier. And we'll make R equal to, say, 3. And look at the explicit, let's look at the recursive formula. So A sub n equals A sub n minus 1 times, this is 1.3, it's supposed to say 3. And that's because we changed. Oh, there it is. And if we want to see the explicit formula, it's a sub 1, which is 2, times 3 to the n minus 1, which we've done in class. And with that information, you'll be able to answer all the questions on the student exploration sheet, which is it's coming up. There it is. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that you'll be able to answer all those. Okay, so you should be all caught up now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And thank you all very much. Uh, this is a great class, and thank you for your patience. Have a great rest of the week.